Welcome everyone to another case study with AFR. Today I am with Kyle Christian and we're going to talk about a very interesting uh, VTAC case. So thank you for joining us today, Kyle. Definitely. Um, so you were dispatched on Rescue 11 to a 26 Alpha for a 73-year-old male. What kind of stuff goes through your head when you're on your way to a 26 Alpha? So this is definitely one of those calls um, that could be that mixed bag of tricks. Um, it's it's pretty difficult to really nail down what's going to happen with the 26 Alpha. Sometimes you have um, that, that nice comment from the dispatchers like vomiting or cold and flu symptoms or something to at least have a jumping off point. Um, with this one, it was a medical alert activation, basically just a, a, a life alert, a pendant activation with no further information. <laughs> um, so this actually should have been a BLS crew that was dispatched to it. Our, our uh, in-district engine was out on a... Uh, um, I'll say they were standing by for something. I can't remember now, but they were gone for a little while. We ended up jumping in because it was right down, the, right down the road from the station. And my partner and I had absolutely no idea what we were walking into. So we kind of brought all the bags and we're ready for anything. These, these calls could kind of go any which way. So. Okay. Well, fantastic. I'm glad you were ready. <laughs> um, so you show up at this apartment complex and what did you see? So essentially we walked in, um, we, we knocked on the patient's door, um, and he was able to answer the door. Um, he was kind of eating a snack. The TV was on. It was a, a studio apartment, just kind of a one one room apartment with a bed right there in the living room. He kind of let us in and and went and laid back on the bed and and kept eating his snack. And you know, we we asked, "Did you activate nine one one?" And he said yes, and wasn't really giving us much. Um, so we we kind of said, "Hey, do you do you want to go to the hospital? What's going on? Can you?" Tell us why you pushed your button. Was it an accident? Um, was kind of our first question. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he just kind of told us, you know, like, I, I feel weak. I feel dizzy. Um, I passed out a few times today. Um, I just don't really feel right. Like, okay, well, let's, let's check you out. Let's, let's get you going to the hospital. And he waved us off and said, I don't really want to go. I just want you to check me. Like, okay. So in my mind, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll check some vital signs. We'll make it a patient refusal if he doesn't want to go, maybe just give him some peace of mind and that's all it requires. Um, and <laughs> fortunately, uh, we, we did start getting those vital signs. That's, that's definitely a kudos to my partner where in my mind, I, you know, it's kind of no harm, no foul. I'll just kind of leave you here. Um, if you don't want to go with us and my, my partner actually put him on, uh, the, the pulse ox and saw that his heart rate was 160. Oh, shoot. Um, thought that was weird and, uh, <laughs> went to feel for a radial and kind of just looked at me and was like, it, it feels faster than that. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> close out of my refusal signature page. And uh, we started doing a full assessment on him. Um, found out that he had kind of an unknown cardiac history. He told us that he had a pacemaker. Um, couldn't tell us why he had a pacemaker. Uh, we started listing off kind of common diagnoses. Do you have a fib? Have you had a heart attack before? Any heart failure? Like we're, we, we were really going down the rabbit hole and he just kept shaking his head. That doesn't sound familiar. So we just knew that he had a pacemaker and a history of depression. That was really all he could tell us. Um, didn't know if he took meds, didn't know if he should be taking meds. This was a hundred percent your run of the mill 26 alpha where you, oh, wow. you're really grasping at straws. Um, yeah, but yeah. So, so here you have an elderly male with a seemingly kind of benign complaint that just wants to be checked out. And sure. all of a sudden you realize like he's having these syncopal episodes. It, right. His vitals are very abnormal. So you go ahead and do a full workup on him. And did the full workup on him, put him on the, the cardiac monitor, um, found out his heart rate was a little more in the 220, 230 range. Um, and it was in VTAC, very, very obvious ventricular tachycardia, monomorphic, just, you know, that perfect zigzag kind of zipper pattern mm -hmm. um, that definitely made my partner and I both raise, raise our eyebrows a little bit. Like, we're about to do some medicine. Uh, <laughs> you know, like we, we kind of had that, that sinking feeling in our stomach, like, wow, this is not what I thought I was walking into. Um, but beyond that heart rate, really kind of what we, we realized was that he was still talking to us in full sentences. He was a, and O. his, a little bit of a soft pressure. It was, you know, a hundred over 70 or so. Um, but really no horrible complaints just said that he felt, you know, more lightheaded when he stood up. So we, uh, we, it was it was just us responding. There was uh, no AAS unit assigned to the call. Uh, our in district engine was out of district, um, so we we called for another engine. We knew we were going to need some manpower. We were going to transport this patient. Um, 
So we started working on what we would normally do on, you know, any, any cardiac complaint. We, we got the 12 lead, we got a line, we started giving a little bit of fluid, mm -hmm. um, kind of cautiously giving fluid. We still didn't entirely know what was causing this or if this is even normal for him, has it happened before? Um, but by the time it actually was engine 11, then ended up clearing, they, they cleared their, uh, their CIP to come help us out. But, um, by the time they got there, we had established a line. We gave two doses of lidocaine Great. to see if we could, uh, convert this relatively stable VTAC or it was at least VTAC with a pulse, a good mental status. We didn't really feel like it was anything we were going to be particularly aggressive with for all we knew this was something he kind of went in and out of and maybe had been dealing with for a while, whether he knew it or not. Um, but it really wasn't until we got him moved to the gurney and, and got ready to transport him that we kind of started to notice that he wasn't really making sense with the same or he was kind of starting to drift off mid sentence, um, just not fully answer our questions. And that was when we, you know, really realized that we were going to start digging down the rabbit hole a little bit for, uh, for more aggressive treatments. <laughs> so you initially identified this as stable VTAC or VTAC with a pulse. And that's because he did have a palpable pulse. He seemed to be maintaining okay. And his pressure was hanging in there. So right. it sounds like your, your first steps of that algorithm were, were spot on, give some fluid, try the antiarrhythmics, see if that converts him. Right. Um, got so. your IV going, got your 12 lead. And then, and then once you got him loaded, it sounds like he had a mental status change. And then, right about the time we got him in in the back of uh, the rescue, it was it was myself, my partner, and then we brought one of the pipe men along with us just to kind of help get vitals. Um, at that time, he was still doing doing pretty okay. He was he was answering our questions. Um, nothing substantial had really changed with his mental status. It just seemed like he kind of wasn't as quick to answer us. Um, so we thought just having someone to help with vital signs would be would be helpful in the back. Uh, fortunately, we did have three providers in the back because it was about the time I started calling in a radio report to uh, Heart Hospital um, that my my ALS partner kind of, you know, was waving his arms trying to get my attention. Um, the The patient's head had started kind of head bobbing. He was um, kind of making incomprehensible sounds, uh, was still on the monitor. We still had the continuous cardiac monitoring, was still in VTAC. There was nothing that had changed about the, about the rhythm. It was still a monomorphic VTAC in the low 200s um but we had a mental status change right. um we did have the forethought when we loaded him up that this you know vtac is kind of an inherently unstable rhythm uh so we had the pads on him good you we're had still, those on early right, right. We, yeah. we actually did have it on pretty early we were kind of it was alarming enough for us uh when we initially realized what it what what, what we were walking into um we put the pads on him before we even really changed the monitor to paddles or anything so, right right, <laughs> right. <laughs> an inherently unstable situation um, but we were, we were still monitoring him, um, you know, via the limb leads. Um, we kind of started to see that mental size change. So about the time I was on the radio, we kind of, my partner and I started doing the, the hand signals to one another. Um, you know, like, Hey, what, what do you need while I have the, the microphone up to my ear? Um, but we had a mental size change. So I kind of stood up while I was giving my radio report and we, um, ended up getting into the narcs box. And in my mind, um, we were going to have to cardiovert this uh -huh. patient, um, with the mental status change, we were now in the unstable realm. Um, still VTAC with a pulse, but very much unstable right. or more unstable than it had been. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we reached in the narc box where we had IV access, um, ended up giving two and a half milligrams of Versed in preparation to synchronize cardiovert. Okay. And how'd that work for you? You know, it actually worked pretty well. Um, it, uh, in my mind, I kind of wanted, um, less of the, the analgesic effect of the, of the, uh, Versed and a little more of the amnesic effect, um, where I'm really hoping I only have to, to shock this guy one time. I, I wouldn't want to remember if it happened to me. Um, that was just kind of at the forefront of my mind. Um, so we, we gave that two and a half IV. It didn't seem to have um, much of an effect on his mental status, but like I said, he was already kind of starting to have a declining mental status. Um, but we, we ended up synchron um, syncing on the monitor. We cardioverted at 100. Um, it did convert him to a sinus tachycardia. Um, it seemed like his, his respiratory rate got a little better, a little less labored, a little more of a, you know, normal rate depth and effort. Um, his, his capnography improved if I remember right, where he was initially hyperventilating, um, had a low capnography. Um, it started to kind of stabilize on us and we okay. didn't have much of an effect on the pressure. Uh, we weren't able to get an automatic pressure before we shocked him, but, uh, fortunately it was still kind of in that soft 100 over 70 range. Yeah. In our mind, it looked like he was doing better. It was certainly a less alarming monitor on the, or rhythm on the monitor. Um, so we, we kind of said, you know, 
crisis averted, at least at least in the, the short good. term. Yeah. Um, yeah, you fixed his VTAC. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. That's excellent patient care. Um, did you have, talk to me about your thought process between choosing fentanyl versus Versed for the cardio version. The, there's pros and cons to each. Sure. So, so kind of like I was saying in, in my mind, I was looking a little more for that amnesic effect. Um, I imagine you would also get that effect, uh, through the fentanyl. Um, I, I, I know we'd, we'd spoken about it a few times before and I'd, we'd, we'd, uh, as a department, I talked about it several times, um, as far as which to choose, whether you're, um, pacing, cardioverting, kind of any number of things. Um, and what I kind of fell back on was if we're, uh, pacing a patient potentially for 10, 15 plus minutes for a transport to the hospital, um, that would be a little more time where we want more of that, um, that analgesic effect where we want a continuous pain relief, a continuous kind of dissociation from that pain. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can always kind of re up the dose if needed, if we start to see that they're, you know, starting to feel more pain. Um, yeah. and I was looking a little more for that amnesic effect where right. let's, uh, let's shock him one time and hope that's it. Yeah. And if it's not, then we can definitely get more aggressive. We can kind of get him, you know, a little more dissociated with that, that versed, um, because what's going to happen is probably not going to get prettier from here. It was essentially <laughs> kind of my thought. Yeah, it was going to be painful. Right. Um, good. I like that thought process. Um, sometimes fentanyl can be a little bit easier on the blood pressure if you already have. It sounds like this guy's blood pressure was fine, so I think Versed was a good choice. But sometimes it, Versed can drop the pressure a little sure. bit and make them a little more unstable. But um, it's nice to have both treatment options and kind of think through the pros and cons of each. Um, all right. And learning points from this case, like you recognized stable VTAC, but inherently unstable. So right. got the, the pads on quickly, went through your antiarrhythmics. Can consider mag if you want to after sure. you've given your, your amiodarone now, but back when we had lidocaine. And then these elderly patients with, um, pretty vague complaints. It's good to have a high index of suspicion that there could be something Wrong. Right. And I'm glad you guys went ahead and pursued a good workup despite his um, resistance initially. Right. That's that's 100 percent a testament to, you know, the, the partner you're working with. Um, I kind of like I said, I, I, I got caught where I I really was thinking this is this is no big deal. Just kind of our normal pendant activation, a slip and fall, something like that. We'll just get a refusal really quick and be done. And, and it was really my partner that kind of pushed to, to dig a little bit deeper and it really kind of started to, to make me realize the things that he was saying that actually were troubling uh, <laughs> in an elderly patient that really wasn't able to tell me about his medical history. Yeah. Um, so it, cool. yeah, it was a fantastic job on his part to kind of, kind of keep me, keep prompt me a uh, clue, prompt me. <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes, sometimes you need that no matter what the, the rank or the licensure you prompt your, prompt your partner, pr prompt your crew. Uh, <laughs> if something doesn't feel right to you, it probably isn't. So yeah, that's good. I'm glad I'm glad you guys are out there taking these complaints seriously and taking good care of patients. You did an excellent job on this call. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you for your efforts out there and keep up the good work. Definitely. Thank you, Doc. So. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for today's case study. We'll see you next time. If you have any cases you want to share or come and talk about with everybody, please submit them on the SharePoint uh, website and we'll be happy to get those uh, done. Thank you.